is the state of Laodicea. Yes. There are churches that claim to be doing better than ever. Oh, yeah. And God sitting back yeah. saying you've never been more wrong. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean to sound like a doomsday prophet, but we better get real. I'd rather see it for myself tonight than see it too late on judgment day. Can I tell somebody, and we feel it and we see it, people are relaxing, people are getting easy, people act like they've got years ahead of them, people acting like it's no big deal. I pray a little bit, pray, read a little bit, fast a little bit, go to church a little bit, and everything will be all right. I come to church when the doors are open, Brother Austin. I read my Bible through every year. I say my little prayers every day. I feel in the Holy Ghost to scream in somebody's ears tonight. The spirit of Laodicea is laughing. It turns around you. And it's going to drag you to a place when you ain't going to be able to shake We fight this stubborn spirit. I am so sick of fighting against the spirit of stubbornness. I'm so sick of hearing all these ill spirits coming out of us. You mean ill spirit coming out of me and I have the Holy Ghost? Yes. There's more spirits than just the Holy Spirit and the devil's kind of spirits. You got a spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As far as I'm concerned, that's the one I'm worried about most of all. Yes, sir. We get stubbornness on us. Anytime someone's stubborn, it's just rebellion in another dress. Oh, I feel like talking. I hope oh, you know what I feel like. The devil's going to gather around their little campfire tonight and tell scary Holy Ghost stories. That's the kind of anointing I feel in this house. We ought to give them something to talk about tonight. I wish to God somebody would realize. Oh, I've been slacking. Oh, I could really be doing better. Oh, I ain't really been what God has called me to be. I wish to God I could get somebody to step out of the aisle and say, Yes, Brother Austin, I am. Yes, Brother Austin, I am doing everything God called me to do. Would somebody like to step in the aisle and make your presence known amongst us tonight? I'm going to see too many moved. You know why? Because we all know in the depths of our heart, there's another place to go to. There's more to pray. There's more to toss. There's more to read. There's more. There's more. There's more.
You ever met them people? They can't take correction. No. Oh, I feel like talking. They can't take correction. Because they got a little story to tell you about everything they've done and how they're right and what they were thinking and what they intended. And they defend everything. Well, you just saw my last nerve. Well, I just happened a bad day. Well, we just don't see it the same way. Hallelujah. Could it be that spirit of us is resting itself on our shoulders? And it pushes. And it pushes. And it pushes. And it weighs. That's why your Bible said, lay aside every sin. And every weight. A weight may not be a sin, but it's something that's going to hinder me in this race. And I'm going to tell you something. The one thing that will get you out of this race faster than anything is having an unteachable spirit. Heard so many messages, prayed so many prayers, yes. and apparently we got it all figured out. Yeah. We won't admit it, yeah. but buddy, we sure do act like it. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I feel such a strong rebuke on me. <laughs> Samson, I'm telling you, you lay your head in the lion's lap, you get comfortable one too many times. That's it, Samson. You just get comfortable for one last time. And the last thing you'll realize is that hair. See, we got to realize that hair was more than just hair. Yeah. That hair was his covenant between him and Jehovah God. Yeah. That thing yeah. that held his covenant together with God Almighty got stripped from him yeah. when he got comfortable. Not too many times. Yeah. I cannot feel like talking. Yeah. And when you're comfortable, we won't realize. The very thing that keeps us in covenant with God Almighty will shake ourselves one more time, and the Spirit of God will know where to I'm all for having this. No, we need that no soul salvation. Amen. We ought to be able to say. With a godly confidence, I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. And I see too many people taking that car, Brother Mike. Yeah, I'm on my way to heaven. You better believe it. Swap my life, swap my life, swap my life. Right there. Just spotted it. Bingo. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> when you grow so confident that it was in your life that got you to heaven you didn't finish reading the book of Revelation for anybody that makes it they'll make it by two things the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony that's it that blood and the word is two and the same. Hallelujah. Because the blood of the Lamb is what washed you white as snow to begin with. Amen. You know what the blood does? I tell you, uh, this has just got me so stirred. I know it's so simple, but I'm just so stirred. You know why the blood works? Because the blood works means there was a sacrifice yes. that paid a penalty. Of your sin. Yes, he did. Thank you, Jesus. That's why the blood works. Yes. Because not only when Jesus was crucified, he didn't just receive the natural beating. He didn't just receive the beard being yanked out of his face. He didn't receive just the crown of thorn. We saw it in the physical. But what happened in the spiritual? Oh yeah. yeah. You know what happened in the spiritual? 
the divine wrath of God that he holds in for sin was poured out on the humanity of that sacrifice. Does that make sense to you all? The divine wrath of God, God lashed it out for it pleased the Father to bruise him. Is that not what Isaiah said? It pleased the Father for that sacrifice to be bruised, to be wounded, to be lacerated. The divine wrath of God was poured out on the man, Christ Jesus. When I stand before that great white throne of judgment, yes, the record of my sins, oh, yes. this is how my sins are forgotten. Because God can see my sin. But guess what? With my sin, there's blood yes. that's washed it away. Yes. And that lets God know my wrath has already been appeased yes. for what they committed. The wrath that I had out for them for their sin has already been paid for. Somebody has already took the wrath. Somebody already took the licking. That's why the blood of Jesus works. Because Heaven spotless land, pure, holy. He that knew no sin became sin for me. And that sin paid the price. Literally, somebody said, Give me Bible where all this. He was sin. He was fully God. And he was fully man. And on that cross, your Bible tells me he became sin. Not the sinner. No. He became the sin. Amen. When he became the sin, God lashed out the wrath. I, I, that's why I believe the weight of the world was upon his shoulders. Yes, yes. That's why he falls beneath the load halfway up Mount Calvary. Yes. Because it was more than just a physical pain. Yes. The divine wrath of God of that and the word of my testimony of what the blood did for me I can come before God with boldness I don't have to fear judgment day I can go before God with a clean record only by the blood sorry somebody said brother Austin you and I on left field no when you realize that it was the blood. The reason you're going to make it in is the blood. My holy lip, the stuff he was preaching a while ago, it's right. You better live it. Yeah. But you know what that is? That's my thankfulness for the blood. That's my thankfulness for the Chapter one. Yeah. Read about those reprobates. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. Read about those men that become the, 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 those men that change the natural use yeah. of a woman. Yes. Yes. Go read about men with men working that which is unseemly. Go home read it. Yes. Go home read it. Yes. But you know what you're going to find in that list in that grotesque. Little snapshot I gave you. You gonna know what you gonna find? You gonna find unthankfulness. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. how many times in the epistles would Paul write? And neither were they thankful. Uh, yeah. I've never seen anybody argue with this man about what's holy living and what's not holy living. That was truly thankful. Amen. <laughs> You want to know how you become poor? How you become blind? How you become naked? I'll tell you how. You, you begin to be unthankful. Yeah. We think we're entitled. 
We thank for him. We got backwards. We got the cart in front of the horse. Yes, and we live our walk with God with the horse trying to push the cart. Yes, and we thank God we're entitled because of our holy land. I'm not entitled to nothing. Not even the salvation of my soul am I entitled to. I'm sorry. Think about it. We're in pretty bad shape when the Creator has to come do His own work. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Because nobody can do it for the sake. Yes. If you're so perfect, then why didn't God just raise you up? Oh, yeah. Why did He even bother in robing Himself in flesh and coming and doing the job Himself? If we're all okay, if everything's all right, if we just follow a little set of rules and everything's okay, then why did Jesus even come? Because after all, that's all the law was. Amen. The law, all they had to do was follow a few set of rules, obey by the law, and everything's been all right. You couldn't do it. No, I couldn't do it. That's why he came. Because you couldn't. Did you hear me? I'm going to say, my goodness, Brother Austin, you're being a real, really Debbie Downer tonight. No, I'm being real. Amen. Amen. We, the only reason he came was because we couldn't do it. Amen. So why do we get so arrogant in thinking we can? Amen. 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 Pop our chest up, stick our nose in the air, walk around like some gorilla. Yeah. Waiting on their own ground, that's right. I would to God a humbleness would get all of us. I've never seen anybody that was humble. Amen. He's stubborn. Amen. I've never seen anybody that was meek be rebellious. I never seen anybody that had a tender heart. Be hard hearted. You know what a true honest heart before God will do? When he hears correction, yeah. he'll take that correction with fear. Yes, amen. And say, oh my God. Yes, sir. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Lord, I, 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 I'm sorry I didn't realize. Yes, sir. I didn't know. They ought to see that. Thou knewest not. God wants somebody to know tonight. You walked into this house having a mindset, having a certain set in the heart. And the Holy Ghost is saying to you tonight, you don't even know. You're poor, you're blind, you're naked. Watch it, watch it, watch it. The very next verse, because God does it often. You want to know when God's speaking and when the devil's speaking? The devil will condemn you and give you no hope. Yes, amen. When God speaks, he'll call you out. He won't condemn you, he'll convict you. Amen. But when he convicts you, he'll offer you a plan how to fix it. Amen. Watch it. Even lay on steel. You're poor, you're blind, and naked. Conviction. Next verse. He can't even get a verse passed without offering them something to fix their poor. Their poorness. Their blindness and their nakedness. I'm trying to convince you. Buy me gold. That thou mayst be rich. Amen. I'll give you a white ring to clothe your nakedness. Alright? He's took care. He's took care of the, the poverty part, the poorness. He said, I'll give you gold. I'll make you rich. I'll give you a white ring. I'll fix your nakedness problem. And you're blind. 
And I'll anoint your eyes with us. And after I anoint you, you want to see like you never saw before. Sometimes the anointing of Isaac shows up like a light in the heavens, knocks you on your knees. And it shows up in a voice that says, Saul, Saul. Why persecute us now? Can I submit to you that Saul saw more in those three days of blindness than he ever saw in his entire life? Because sometimes God has to blind us yes, sir. from everything else in this world yes, sir. for us to see what's going on in the name.